Hey, what's up guys? This is Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. I'm back in action. Today, I'm back using Heartbeat, and I've got some tips and tricks that I want to share for those of you that are small YouTube channels. If you got a small YouTube channel, pardon me, and you want to grow it, these are some great tips. I've got nine tips here. It's from Marcus Jones, and he just created a video called 21 YouTube Settings That Expletive Small Channels. Now, I'm not going to use that word. Don't want to trip off the sensors and all that good stuff. And but uh, bottom line is there's a whole bunch of good tips in this video. I've selected nine that I think are really, really good. And I've actually just implemented a couple on my personal channel already. So here we go. Join me on Heartbeat. Let's go through them. All right, so here we go. So we're using the Heartbeat tool, h.ki. Links in the description below. And at the top of my page here under moments, you're going to see here I've got eight or nine, no, nine or ten moments here selected for the Marcus Jones video. It's going to start off pretty quick. He's going to talk about publish to subscriptions feed. And this is actually my favorite of all the nine moments. So let's kick it off and start her here. Into your YouTube studio, go to content, content and hover over one of your videos. Just click on details like so. Now, if we keep coming yeah. down, we're going to see this setting here. Publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers. This is going to be, for most people, automatically checked. In my case, it's grayed out. But when you upload a brand new video and you come down to the same section, you'll have the option to toggle this on and off. And right, so when you upload for the first time, you can go ahead and check that on or off, or when you can upload any video for that matter. The problem I see a lot of small YouTubers doing is leaving this checked. When they have a lot of content on their channel that's completely unrelated from each other. For yes, this is very, very important. For example, let's say I have a Star Wars channel and I'm posting a video about Spider-Man. If I leave this checkbox ticked, YouTube is going to promote my Spider-Man video to my existing subscribers who are all Star Wars fans. But they won't click on it, they won't watch it, and that's going to send the algorithm very negative signals about that video. It's going to say, hey, this is a bad video. Don't promote it to more people. And, then and this has happened to me personally a few times. I create a wide variety of content, video editing, AI, Photoshop, Illustrator. I've even done audio books and things like that. And sometimes it would have made sense in hindsight to not click that button because, you know, if I've got a, a video editing channel and then I start posting about an audio book about something else, yeah, they don't get clicked on. It sends a bad message. And honestly, those videos often don't get views. So just something very, very useful, especially for smaller channels that are trying to take on multiple niches, you may want to uh, keep that in the back of your head. The next one here that I want to skip forward to is automatic chapters. This is a very good tip uh, from Marcus here. The next setting, we're going to scroll a little bit down from where we just were, still on the video page, and we're going to come to allow automatic chapters and key moments. Chapters are when you see the video play bar on YouTube broken up into segments with a title for each segment. Now you can create chapters manually, like I'll briefly show you how to do in a second, or you yep. can allow YouTube to automatically chapter your videos. The problem with this, YouTube's AI is still not very good. Yeah, it's really not. It can add really dodgy chapters to your videos that are very confusing or that just completely spoil and give away your entire video. And so unless you're like an education channel and you think the chapters are essential to your video, no. but you're too lazy to create them yourself and you're willing to risk it, just turn this one off. If right. So that's one thing you can do. You can turn them off. But I've actually got a better suggestion for you. You can use the heartbeat tool. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And if I go over here to the top right and I click on the little three dots or the ellipses, and I see copy as YouTube chapters, literally you can heartbeat it. So you can create your, you know, your moments using the heartbeat tool, and then you can copy and paste those in as YouTube chapters. Job done, double benefit, same amount of work. Anyway, something I thought I'd share with you, the heartbeat tool does have that built in. So there you go. So now let's go ahead in and let's talk about doxing and how YouTube seems to have a feature that well doesn't dox you, but it makes it easier to do it if someone was inclined. Here we go. Just below the cursed automatic chapters box, and we're going to look at the featured places box. This is yeah. basically going to give YouTube permission to dox you, which you obviously don't want. You don't want YouTube telling your viewers exactly where you are in your videos. So we're just going to turn that one off so that we can not get stalked by our viewers. Next. Right. So that's basically, I mean, it doesn't make sense to almost have that turned on. Like, Unless you really want people to know kind of where you are and even if it's only with, you know, basic idea of where you are, I wouldn't turn that on. It just seems a little weird. Uh, anyways, let's skip forward a bit here and let's talk about licensing and distribution. 
keeps going down and we're going to come down to this section licensing and distribution now this is going to default to the standard youtube license yeah. which doesn't kill your videos but it makes it more difficult for other people to reuse your content my controversial opinion is anyone reusing your content is free marketing for your videos and if their content happens to do way better than your video then it's a great case study for you to learn from if they reuse your video and it gets like 10 times the amount of views as you wow. you can look at that and be like hey what did they do that made them successful successful and how can I do that but better in my next upcoming videos. Right. So that is a controversial opinion because, I mean, if you look at it from another perspective, what happens if you're a small YouTube channel, which you are sort of by default if you're watching his video here, and, you know, some large upload or some large YouTuber just takes a big chunk of your content and uploads it and monetizes it. I don't know the details, and I know that there are revenue splits and things like that, but there, this is a double-edged sword, sword part of me, but it is something you can switch over here. Let's let them continue a little more. So it's win-win either way. So what I would do is click on here and change this to Creative Commons Attribution, which is going to yeah. give other creators permission to reuse your content in their videos. This so there you go. That is an option. You can go ahead and do that. I mean, if you're a small YouTube channel, it doesn't really matter. It might help promote you, and there's no real downside. But if you become a large channel, you may want to rethink that. Okay, here we go. Let's skip forward a little bit here. And he talks about custom thumbnails and how this works. Essential setting is found in your YouTube studio also. So if you're in your YouTube studio, you're going to want to come down to settings. Yeah. Then in settings, you're going to come to channel. In channel, you're going to come to feature eligibility. Now, yeah. what you're going to want to do is click on these drop downs, basically complete these verification steps because they're going to let you make longer videos. And most importantly, it's going to allow you to add custom thumbnails to your videos and live streams. There it is right there. So that's how you do it. So if you're a small YouTube channel and you don't want the default uh, thumbnails, and I'll be honest with you, in the first year I was making YouTube videos like 10 years ago, I was just using whatever thumbnail the system came up with for me. It went okay, but this is much, much better. Just fill in the form. It's worth it in the long run. Okay, so now let's skip forward a little bit here. He's got another tip about creating automatic subscription links and how you can get people to subscribe with one click and you can create it. And this is a very good, very cool uh, <laughs> tip. You're gonna come to your channel and then you're going to come and copy your link. And then what you're gonna do is open up a text doc, you're gonna paste your channel link in there. And then what you're gonna type yeah. in is question mark sub underscore confirmation equals one. Now, when someone clicks right. this link, they're going to be redirected back to your channel. And if they're on desktop, they are going to be presented with a pop-up that's gonna prompt them to subscribe to your YouTube channel. So you so there you go. So copy that down. I'll put a link in the description below, of course. But basically, you can create an automatic pop-up for desktop users to just subscribe to your channel. And so they can hit yes or cancel. And I mean, it's not intrusive because it's a link they clicked on and the pop-up comes after they've clicked. So keep that in the back of your head. All right. He's got a few more good tips here I want to share with you. Let's look at uh, branding and video watermarks and how you can get a subscribe branding button at the bottom right, for example, uh, well, for free. Next one, you're gonna to come to your YouTube studio. You're going to come down and go to customization. Then we're going to come to branding. In branding, you're gonna be able to upload a custom channel banner, profile picture. Most of you have probably already done that. The thing that a bunch mm -hmm. of small YouTubers haven't done yet is to upload a video watermark down here. Now what you want to do is grab something that looks like this. It should have some sort of subscribe call to action on it. Anyway, you're going to hit done on that. And then what you're going to do, another mistake people do is they just leave it on the default settings. We're yeah. not going to do that. We're going to come down to entire video. What that's going to do is add a little watermark like this in the bottom right hand side of our video for the entire video. If someone clicks on that watermark, they're going to be able to subscribe to our channel. Helpful. So there it is. That's, that's it in a nutshell. That will be on your video the entire time. And as a small YouTube channel, getting subscribers, especially at the beginning, is really important. You want to rack up those numbers so you can meet your uh, monetization objectives. And that's just one more way to do that. All right, let's go a little bit further here. I've got another moment that I want to share with you. And this is about upload defaults and visibility. This is the last moment uh, from this video. 
back down to settings and we're going to come down to uploading defaults and yep. then come down to visibility. Now here are some cool time-saving sayings where you can input a default title, default description template, default tags, etc., etc. But these don't really destroy your channel. What can destroy your channel or at the very least destroy your ego when you accidentally mm. upload a video that was never meant to see the light of day is this visibility setting here. Now on default, YouTube is going to upload all your videos to public. So once you upload this is an important point. The defaults to public. If you upload anything and you just sort of walk away, it's going to be published. And a lot of people will upload stuff as a draft or they'll upload it so their client can look at it. If you're doing commercial work, there's so many reasons why you might want to make sure that this is uh, switched them and hit publish it's going to immediately be sent out to all of your fans so a really nice safety precaution click on this change it to unlisted hit save that way next time or you upload a video that was meant to go live at a later date you're not going to accidentally post it definitely not speaking for experience haven't haven't ever done that I don't know. guys i've done that multiple times and especially now with strikes and things like that it never hurts unless it even as like a second check so you check it you upload it as unlisted, then you review it, you go, okay, this looks good, all right, then just switch it to public. It's one extra click, but it could save you a lot of a lot of pain, let me tell you, and I have been in pain from this, and a lot of other YouTubers have as well. So there you go, guys. These are my favorite tips from his 21 settings that uh, expletive small channels. Let me know what you think about this in the description below or in the comments part of me. Links to everything's in the description is what I meant to say. It's all there, guys. I'll be back with some more tips for you shortly. Thanks for watching.